All right, guys, welcome back. This is Avioziel here again on the precious metal hunt. Basically, this video I'm going to describe where most of the gold that's recovered from in electronic scrap. As you can see here, I have a CPU in the middle with some gold on top of it. I have a CPU to the left of it and a CPU to the right of it. As well, I have a couple of different RAM sticks. Now I'm going to explain to you folks why this is very important to know. The majority of the gold that's recovered from all of your computers is right here in this tray. Now, if you take a look at this CPU right here, this is an older CPU, it's an Intel Pentium Pro. This CPU actually has about two to three grams of gold in it. Uh, it's the highest of all the CPUs ever made. I happened to come across a batch I purchased the other day. And if you take a look, this is actually a very nice gold plate that's on top of it. You can tell there's a little bit of gold on the top and bottom. And as well, you have some nice gold on the back on the pins you can see how beautifully plated that is now these are highly plated so a lot thicker than the newer CPUs in addition they don't make these CPUs anymore these are ceramic CPUs ceramic aren't used anymore they use now these fiber CPUs made up of fiber so inside the ceramic right here you will find little gold wires so it's very important to recover these types of CPUs from older computers and not to throw them out and if you happen to come along something that looks like this Intel Pentium Pro do not throw that away because this right here is about two to three grams of very nice gold gold being at about forty to fifty dollars a gram for pure 24k that could be hundred and fifty dollars right there just in gold recovery now if you take a look at the newer CPUs this is what they look like they're kind of this fibrous green material and if you look in the back there's not that much as far as gold con is concerned you have some ceramic capacitors monolithic capacitors but if you look over here this is where the gold is pretty much contained as far as the fiber you can see a little bit of that shadow there is some gold trace inside the green fiber however it does not compare to the amount of gold that's contained in these CPUs because they did require a lot more um, uh, heat transfer, data transfer, they didn't have the technology and if you notice these little chips that they came up with have taken the place of those bigger chips. This is an AMD CPU. Now if you take a look this is as well ceramic and if you look this, there's the beautiful gold and look how nice that is. It's gorgeous. I just find this fascinating how you can take a CPU and you can look at the beautiful gold that's just all around that. And this is higher carat gold than most of the computer material that you will scrap. So basically the emergence of these newer small CPUs have taken a lot of the precious metal content value away from scrapping computers so if you are going to get into the business make sure that you do get the older machines such as 486 386 286 if you can get an 8088 or an 8086 if you can get a um, after the 486 I think became the Pentium Pentium 1 Pentium Pro then they came out with the Pentium 2, Pentium 3, Pentium 4, and now you got the, the i, i cord, i5, i7, all the quad core and whatever cores you have. Well, the more cores you get, the more uh, technology that's infused in these chips that will allow for less gold content. So pretty much you have a lot of uh, palladium and platinum transistors and whatnot in the back that take the place of where the gold was, which used to be pretty much all over there and you don't see any transistors in this it's mostly all gold so the next item up for bid is you have a nice RAM chip now this is a really cool RAM chip I bought a lot of RAM uh, I bought about a hundred pieces of RAM for about 
um, the guy wanted 50 bucks I gave him 40 got a hundred of these sticks and I bought about 30 CPUs the guy wanted $25 I gladly gave him 30 instead so I picked up 30 CPUs and about a hundred sticks of RAM for only about 70 bucks and that's a steal because in this piece alone right here I got at least a gram or two of solid gold which will make up the whole entire lot that I bought so I'm just gonna go and tell you what else we have here in the RAM so the RAM contains pretty much the edge connectors if you look closely that is where the gold is right there and it, what you want to do is basically trim that piece now you have two options you can basically trim it with uh, tin, tin uh, snips or you can use a uh, fine scissor that's sharp and strong or you can do something that I do which is you can get a very uh, sharp um, how do you call those things come on you know those things that you um, uh, it, the, the word is slipping my mind right now but it's a chisel that's what it is it's a wood chisel and it's actually very sharp on the edge I got one for about 10 15 bucks that's really sharp and you can actually pry those pieces of gold without having to snip the whole entire thing so you can just collect them put them in a pile and then melt them now if you notice there's also gold in the chip so you have these integrated chips inside these chips there's some wires some fine wires so the first thing you want to do is you want to pry these chips off with your chisel scrape both sides and basically put these chips aside because we're gonna process them and I'll show you how later for the tiny microscopic gold wires that are inside them the next thing you want to do is basically snip those fingers off not your fingers but the gold ram fingers or the edge connectors as they're called so you can put together the nice pile of gold that we have here and then lastly you want to look for any transistors that are on the board any little monolithic capacitors in this case these are too small to grab there's one right there if you look at them they're gonna be a little bit of a grayish color so if you can tell there's about a couple of them in there I have a better example this piece of RAM is older so you can tell the chips are bigger those squares right there those are monolithic capacitors I mentioned those in another video these have palladium and platinum inside them and that's another way of making lots of money so basically you wanna put those aside so don't throw the RAM chip away after you just take the gold off the bottom what you want to do is first start with your chips put the chips aside next look for any of those transistors and put them aside next thing you want to do is take your RAM finger on the bottom not your finger but the RAM finger and then lastly you want to put the chip aside because there is some gold still left to be recovered and we're going to do that with the aqua regia method or the nitric acid hydrochloric acid mixture that you could um, basically put these fingers or whatever else is remaining cpu chips and whatnot and recover whatever other gold is left so you can see here there's some traces of gold and this one has some nice traces of gold as well so all these different little pathways are plated with gold and if you look in the back it's pretty fascinating how this works now those chips are pretty cool I'm using this as an example because you're gonna come across a lot of different types of chips with different quality and if you notice right there I spotted three monolithic capacitors you put those together and put them in a jar and they're gonna pretty much gather pretty quickly you got one there you got three right there you got another one right there that's already four turn it around and I'm sure you got a couple more now you you do have a bunch of small ones so if you really want to get technical and save you can do that as well I tend to go for the bigger stuff however there's lots of gold platinum palladium to be recovered it's such a beautiful thing.
people selling this stuff for peanuts, throwing them out on the side of the curb, donating them from libraries and schools. And there's so much precious metals to be recovered. And I feel honored to be part of this process. And it's my pleasure to teach people who don't know the value of these old computer parts, especially older equipment, more so some telecom. Well, actually, the highest grade gold you can find is in military equipment. So if you can get any military grade computers, any military equipment, the next thing that would have the most gold content is telecommunication boards, any telecom boards. Uh, those have really, really good uh, heavy plating of gold because you can't take the chance when you're dealing with telecom or military that the signal will be lost. Now, using silver, as we know, oxidizes, but gold never tarnishes. So the reason why gold, even though silver is a better conductor of electricity, silver is the best conductor of electricity there is, but silver does oxidize. And because it oxidizes and tarnishes in the air when oxygen hits it it will lose its conductivity over time if not protected so the computer companies the military the telecom companies can't afford to invest a lot of money putting out this high-tech equipment and then four or five years down the line it fails just because oxygen or hair not hair air hit the silver turning it a different color, losing its conductivity, and eventually failing. So the reason gold is used, being the second best conductor in the periodic table of elements, is because gold will never tarnish. Even if it's thousands of years old, it will never change color, no matter how much air it's subjected to. So pretty much we covered here the basics of gold recovery, this is the majority of where precious metal scrappers are going to be recovering their gold content from. So just to reiterate, we're going to get the CPUs first. CPUs have very high gold content. You will notice that your computer has a lot of pins, IDE pins that connect the hard drive, floppy disk drive, the CD-ROM, DVD-ROM drive. And all, all around the, uh, the motherboard, you have all kinds of different pins. Those are gold plated. However, these pins are heavier plated because we're dealing with a lot of heat and a lot of data transfer that's more sensitive than just having a hard disk or a floppy disk go. So it's easier to replace a disk drive, but when it comes to CPUs, companies can't be liable for whole systems going down because the brain or the processor of the computer happened to go because there wasn't enough gold to sustain the flow of heat transfer. So guys, this is um, a pleasure to uh, inform you of all this beautiful stuff here. Ceramic CPUs aren't made anymore. So if you do come across these CPUs, especially the Pentium Pro, this has got two to three grams of fine gold in it. Put this one aside, I don't, I don't even want to process that, it's so beautiful. But then if you get the older ones like this, these are also ceramic, have lots of nice gold pins in the back, and the newer CPUs, just listen to that clank. It's, you hear that? And then you got the newer CPUs which have this fiber, and you can tell the gold is not as heavy. See the difference of the color? Look how this is kind of pale yellow only when you turn it you can see but right away even from there you can see how orange that is and you, you know the finer the carrot of the gold the more orange it is look at look at the difference of the gold and then here this is just a way of showing you how people have gotten so smart that's the kind of chintz the gold off the CPUs and how they make them faster by taking off less gold is even the greater mystery but you know those folks in China know how to do everything under the Sun so I guess they figured out how to make some other kind of little chip in the middle that's got some other content of precious metals such as palladium and platinum 
to make your computer faster. Mind you, they did make the motherboard and everything else around it a lot faster as well. So we're not really heavily relying on the chip itself. Lastly, we got the RAM different types of RAM go for those edges that's about 18 karat gold right there depending on how old it is the older ones you can tell this older one see how it's orangey the older it is the more orange it is and it's probably higher carat that could be even 20 karat, 21 karat gold which is like 90 percent and then you got the newer chips which aren't as heavily plated so if you look at the gold and you see it's a lot shinier that means it's less plated the way you tell fake gold off the bat is just by looking at it and if you see it shines quickly and doesn't have that deep color tone to it that luster that orangey look then it's not see how that yellow it's yellow but then if I pick up this one right here it doesn't shine right away well I'm hitting the light the wrong angle but if you look at it it's got an orangey hue maybe if I turn it this side I'm just fascinated by this stuff guys so that's the video for now it's um, a pleasure to um, inform you guys of all this wonderful information please be tuned please stay tuned to see how we're gonna process this stuff to extract the precious metals from all this beautiful stuff including the ceramic cpus and the ram fingers from the gold and make sure to check out my other videos and i wish you guys of course a safe and healthy precious metal journey make sure to keep your safety first always wear gloves goggles if necessary don't handle any acids if you don't know what you're doing make sure to google and be informed on the different processes hydrochloric acid muriatic acid uh, uh, nitric acid and uh, aqua regia and all those things can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing don't attempt without the proper information and guidance as well don't try and melt those metals without knowing how to use the torch properly I will do my best as this series continues to inform everybody on the proper usage of all these chemicals and different torches and gases and whatnot so you could have a safe journey and a fun journey at the same time so this is Aviozio signing out once again on the precious metal hunt and the recovery of gold silver platinum palladium and copper as well as aluminum and even stainless steel you could put it all together in nice little piles and don't send it to the scrapyard but you're gonna learn how to refine them yourself and melt them down into small ingots and little bars so you could have your own little savings so don't get the scrappers rich get yourself rich alright guys this is Avi signing out have a great night